Welcome to another edition of the Transfer Talk podcast and the road show has brought us to Munich and we're joined by the one and only Michael Balak. Michael, welcome along. This is the bit where you tell us all the deals that happened during your career and reveal a few secrets of the ones that didn't. You happy with that? We'll see, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so I feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start at the beginning, first of all. Who would you say was the biggest influence on your career? Oh, I think I think I have to name my parents, you know, because uh, they know me from very small, and uh, yeah, they educated me, uh, yeah, as as the people who were always next to me, and uh, uh, everything what I achieved, I think uh, I achieved because of them. For every Michael Ballack, though, I'm sure you you'll understand that there are hundreds of players that don't make it. How and where were you spotted, and and, and by who? I mean, I grew up in East Germany, and uh, um, uh, I did normal way. Um, as as you might be know, there there was a very well, well a good education in sport. There was a really focused on sport, and so um, I, I start very early playing on the street, you know, uh, and then so the, it's the year of six or seven. I joined the club, so the normal process, and then um, I was really good. I was talented, and then. Um, the biggest club in town, in, in Karl Markstadt, now it's Chemnitz. Uh, they they called me for for a move to to de- to them, and then I joined a sports school called K- uh, KJS in that uh, days, with 12, 13, very young age. So until the age of 18, um, I, I I stayed at the town. So our club played in the second Bundesliga in these days, and I had a very Bad first year, not me personally, but the club, we, which we, we got relegated. So we went down into the third league. So already with 18-19, I had a, a big decision um, to, made, to make uh, in terms of do I stay or maybe move? Because, uh, yeah, I was a talented player and there was a lot of eyes on me and there was already some offers. So that was something, uh, yeah, what... what in a normal way, I, 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 I really enjoyed my, my youth at my club, but then, of course, later, uh, I, I switched the clubs. You, you said that clubs started noticing you. Kaiserslautern, of course, was one of those clubs. How did that move come about? I, I remember 1816 Munich in that time was, was asking for me, even Werder Bremen clubs, because I was joining the, the under-21 team, so there was a bit of focus on me, but I felt not ready, you know, I felt not ready for professional football on that level, and so I said to myself, uh, I, I stay another year playing in the third league, yeah, to, to get this physical improvement and this experience in the first team, even in the third league, which was a really important stay for me when I look back because I played the whole year on the first team I could score I played in midfield you know offensive midfield before I when I was 18 in the in the last year of youth I played in at a sweeper and there's a totally different play you know and um, so that was a really important year for me I scored 10 goals but we couldn't make the move again up to the second league and then was of, of, of course a new situation Kaiserslautern was uh, um, showing interest and uh, yeah, in that moment I felt ready because I had this experience here for me. Let's call it really important young, in a young age, and uh, so I made that move. And, and what a decision! You go to Kaiserslautern, newly promoted Kaiserslautern, first season in the Bundesliga, and they win the title. When you look back on everything you've achieved, finals. World Cup Finals, European Championship Finals, Champions League Finals, winning Bundesligas. Where does that one rank? Is that right at the top? Yeah, I think so. It was something unique we achieved. Even if I was not so important, like maybe I was later for different clubs because I was still a young player and I was, uh, especially in the first six months, uh, a substitute player. So, But I got my experience or my time on the pitch. Uh, even if it was not too long, I felt being totally part of the team and uh, what we achieved, the dynamic in the year was, was amazing with Otto Rehagel as uh, yeah, one of the most uh, yeah, important German coaches in, in history. 
he, he uh, put something together, he created this uh, atmosphere in the club, around the club, which was something amazing because he never really uh, a member or stuff, even the players could believe that we could win the title. There was a special year and uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot because I played with so many experienced players, Andy Bremer, Jerko Sforza, uh, yeah, Pavel Kuka, they, they, these were players, they were, yeah, they were quite unique in that moment and Otto Rehagel, yeah, had a team combined with a very young, talented players, Marco Reich, me, some others, uh, they were, were a good mix and uh, yeah, that was something amazing. So you have two seasons at Kaiserslautern and you're still a young man at 22 when, when you make the move to Bayer Leverkusen. How did that move come about or um, there must have been, you've just won the Bundesliga as a young player, there must have been other clubs that are saying we want Michael Ballack as well. So how did the Leverkusen one come along and who else was in for you? Yeah, suddenly after the second year, we finished fifth. Uh, Leverkusen was was showing interest, you know, and uh, of course for me it was another step because Leverkusen was one of the clubs who yeah, was really uh, developing young players. It was the next step for me because Kaiserslautern, even after winning the first year the league, um, was not on that level like other clubs already, but uh, that was for me another step or another uh, possibility to make the next step. And um, I didn't remember there were a lot of uh, other clubs expect, uh, except Bayern Munich. I, I remember they were also showing interest. But for me also, like I mentioned it before, it was al always thinking, doing step by step. And if I d didn't feel ready for, for a huge club or a big name club, uh, I didn't make it. Was it in the back of your mind though, Bayern Munich? Maybe not then, but one day? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I grew up really simple and um, my parents always tell, told me, uh, yeah, you, you have to have a good feeling, you know, you have to do that what you feel. And, and uh, in that moment I felt this is the right move for me because it's after Kaiserslautern, um, Bayern Munich was would be a big step, and I and I saw these all these big players, you know, and I didn't feel 100% comfortable to make that huge step. I, it doesn't mean I, I I was not looking for a new challenge, but Leverkusen all, already was for me a big challenge, and uh, uh, that's why I thought, yeah, 22 and young of 21, 22. Um, it would be the perfect club for me uh, to make the next step. You, you're quite measured in what you say about when you made certain transfers, you're sort of using the phrase step by step. Bayern Munich then come calling. And by now, I'm sure that all of Europe's biggest clubs are, th are looking at Michael Ballack and thinking, we want him. So who came calling and why did you choose Bayern Munich? Yeah, that's not a secret. Uh, Real Madrid also wanted to sign me at that time, 2002, even before the final, of course, I, I mentioned it. I had one of my best years, if not my best year, uh, from the numbers, from the point of the numbers. And uh, yeah, Real Madrid was also very, very interested, uh, but Bayern Munich as well. And I was, uh, with, with knowing that 2006, the World Cup is in Germany, uh, thinking about what what is the best. and. Uh, of course, Real Madrid is something special, but uh, for me, Bayern Munich as the German club also. And uh, yeah, finally, I don't know what what was the point, the decision why I made it. I I was listening to my 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 feeling, like I did it before as well, and I felt, yeah, Bayern Munich for me is the right address uh, as the best German club, uh, and and Real Madrid was always something you can have in mind after because I was still young with 24, um, to do it maybe later. And so I decided for Bayern Munich, with all these arguments, you know, for myself, uh, to make that step. And uh, that's why I chose Bayern Munich. You, you don't strike me as a man who has regrets, Michael, but when you look back on that, does part of you think, maybe I could have gone, maybe I should have gone to Real Madrid? There's, there's always clubs, you know, in, 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 in history where you could play and but I, I'm so pleased with my career and the clubs I played for and I always felt really, really comfortable and, and, and I enjoyed the time 
uh, which I played for, especially in that moment for the club, so that I never regret that. Uh, even even there was a there was a situation in 2004. Uh, we didn't win the league at Bayern Munich, and um, yeah, the club was not happy. In general, he's never happy when he doesn't win, you know. And especially then, yeah, they have to make new decisions, and were, I was not happy. And so, I, I had an, an an offer from from Barcelona, 2004, and it was really really close that that I go there. But finally, how close? It was very close. I was. Uh, I was I was talking to the guys with uh, from Ram, uh, from from Barcelona, and um, we agreed on on any terms ex except uh, the fee for for the club. So uh, that was the last thing they had to solve, or the club has to had to solve, and and they and they didn't come together. I remember that in these days I went to I had some arguments with Uli Hoeneß. Uh, about a lot of things in the club, they didn't run well. About yeah, the team, the strength of the team, where we can improve things to actually yeah do better, not just in the league, but also especially in the, on the international way. We, because uh, yeah, if you want to win the Champions League um, uh, again after 2001, I mean we had to improve the team. But then the the, the season ends, and then I had a. I remember I had a, a friendly match uh, before the European Cup 2004 uh, against Malta, and uh, we always did these two friendly matches to prepare for the for the European Cup, and I scored four goals in a in a very unimportant match against Malta, and suddenly Bayern Munich was yeah impressed from huh. from their own player again because now uh, yeah I was so much more worth, and they asked for so much more money. Which was unrealistic in these days, 50 plus million or even more, I don't know. But the move, yeah, we didn't come together or the clubs didn't come together, so they actually decided to keep, keep me and they didn't let me go. But that was, I accepted that, you know, I accepted that even if we were different opinion just a few weeks before and, and I carried on two more years. We won twice the double with Bayern Munich, but of course things are changed and as a professional footballer, I'm professional enough to. To accept decisions, and uh, so I, I gave my best uh, the next two years for the club, uh, until I I made the move to Chelsea. Many years on, when you look back there, is there a tinge of regret that you didn't call the new camp your home? Of course, sometimes, sometimes, especially <coughs> six months later, um, um, I was thinking about that, you know, because Barcelona had a great team, a fantastic team. It was the days of Ronaldinho, if I'm and and there were, there were some amazing players there as well. So I had these two opportunities, 2002, 2004, to to join Spanish football, especially the two biggest clubs, uh, in that time. And of course, if you look back, it would be interesting or maybe int uh, interesting to know how things are went if I would do this. But this is sometimes in life you make decisions, and I I, I repeat that I'm more than happy with my decisions I did. And things are like sometimes you can't make the decision because in that case it was not my decision when the club so. says no, no, you have to stay because you have a contract and I totally accept that because I signed four years and but sometimes in football things are going quick and uh, so of course I it was in my mind to have this new challenge uh, in 2004 but it, it was not it didn't come together or it didn't happen and so I never re regret something because. It was like it was. Well, when you left Bayern, though, it was on a free transfer. Your contract yes. had run down. Was that your decision? And what 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 were Bayern Munich thinking then? Because I'm 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 relaying it to to today's football, and it's the one thing that all clubs want to avoid happening mm -hmm. because they could have got massive money for you. Yeah, of course there was something after in the year 2005. I, I was not happy because uh, you know I had this um, this this interview with, with uh, Uli Hoeneß and he gave me his word that we go different ways and I totally accept that. But like I mentioned, I was professional enough to, uh, to play well, to give my best, but also I had in mind what can I achieve with, with Bayern Munich and are they willing uh, to improve that team like we really can attack uh, the Champions League. And we had this, this, argument, this argument 
and we disagree in certain points that was not out of the world one year later or a few months later so I still uh, had a critical point on the team and um, unless they didn't invest that money to improve the team um, I was not I didn't see a real point to extend my contract so um, because 2000 after 2005 that's what they wanted they give me an uh, uh, they wanted to extend my contract and uh, I asked them I, I look I, I won the, the league now it looked 2006 really good as well three four times you know in four years three times winning the league or the double it's, it's a great achievement but international wise uh, we didn't really had a chance because we, we didn't have that team to to really go really go out and say ah, we are a team to actually can win win the Champions League and that was not the case and that's why I was looking for for something else and also I was 28 29 and I really wanted to make this international ex experience um, which I didn't make 2002 2004 I had yeah like things are in 2006 it was actually more or less the last um, opportunity for me to do that step and uh, yeah Bayern Munich of course was not happy that uh, I was running out of the contract but um, I see it in a different way I mean as a player if you sign four years uh, I want to to give everything that four years and after it was a different uh, a different time and uh, that was the case um, and we played with open cards I, I told them early enough uh, that I decided myself uh, I want to go a different way or I want to take a new challenge in terms of in terms of Chelsea and that's how things happened now I'm guessing if you've been under contract there would have been Europe's biggest clubs would have been after you you're now free so I'm guessing you probably couldn't count the number of clubs on two hands could you who are genuinely interested in you who was were Chelsea the only Premier League club as well at the time who wanted you? No, actually the, one of the first were Man United who were showing interest uh, but they also had not the best year I remember 2006 I think they went out in the group stage and the arguments I just said because uh, winning the league is one thing but um, for me it was always a dream to, to win the Champions League and what team with what, with what team I really can attack this this trophy you know I really have a chance to win that trophy it was not easy to decide because there are so many good clubs but like I mentioned um, Man United in, in these days they were not as good as before like Bayern Munich like Bayern Munich uh, 2000 2001 99 they had their best years they joined the final twice so they went out in the first first round and, and Chelsea yeah, I was winning the league twice with Jose Mourinho. They they invested in a lot of players and they had that amazing squad. And for me, when when Chelsea came, yeah, I had to wage yeah these things. And, and of course, yeah, Man United, amazing club, you know, with a huge history. But Chelsea, yeah, also having huge ambitions. Uh, I chose Chelsea, and the package was was really good I feel well, really comfortable with and that's why London also for me was also uh, a point an argument to join a great city you know when you're in a in, in an age with 29 you you already have family it's also really important for the family I also look that they feel comfortable and and, and I talk to my family in these days so, and uh, yeah, we made a decision to go to London. So, so did it get to the point where it was, there's an offer from United, there's an offer from Chelsea, what am I going to do? I think I gave the sign quite early also to my agent that um, I would prefer yeah, Chelsea from the beginning. And if, if we can agree on the, on the numbers, on the circumstances, of course, that would be my, my preference. Can you recall how it happened, though, with regard to who spoke to you? Did you... Did you speak to Jose? Did you speak to Roman? Not to Roman. I think uh, Peter Kenyon in these days uh, was a, was a big imp um, big factor uh, to to do the transfer. But also, I was it was al always uh, important for me to talk to the coach and to get a feeling for the coach. And Jose was a was a coach. Of course, if you talk to him, you you really get 
yeah, catched by, the, by, by his personality and by his ambitions and, and the way uh, I can do another step, you know, after Bayern Munich, a big club, German club, but also internationally big club. Uh, uh, working with a coach like that was something totally, totally new for me and, and it was quite impressive and I felt really, really comfortable with the decision and I was really looking for, forward for the challenge. Then, is it in the back of your mind, then you start seeing United do what they did straight after you join? They win three titles in a row, depriving Chelsea That's of football. the title as well. <laughs> yeah. And they win the Champions League as well. Yeah. Against you could, us. Because you couldn't force, have foreseen that happening given the state of the squad that you perceived it to be, right? Yeah. No, but that's football, you know. That's football and, and <coughs> uh, you never know what you, what you get when you do a decision. And, and you're always, let's say, more intelligent after. But that was not a, a decision I, I regret because, uh, yeah, it was up to us to, to change that because they were playing in the same league, you know. Uh, it was our fault not to win the league. Uh, that they were this little bit better than us, oh, especially the first three years. Okay, winning the, the Champions League, it was, was a tight match and there was this lucky moment when you slip. This is football, you know, and this is not really something what you can explain after, or this is right or this is wrong. So this is like football, oh, it's really tight and, and uh, making decisions. It's, it's, it, there, these were decisions who uh, were on a high level for me, you know, and a decision to to go to Man United or Chelsea with 29 was not really something what, what I regret because we won a title, le a title less or more after. You mentioned decisions. We'll come to a couple of particular decisions in a particular match. I think you know what I'll ask you in a moment. But I want to ask you about Jose because after one season with him, early in your second season, he's sacked. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind then? Because he's the guy that has impressed you so much when you've arrived at the club. He leaves, and I know that that is what happens in football sometimes, coaches come and go, but he was the self-confessed special one. And you must have thought, what was going through your mind then? When he leaves, did you think, this is not right? No, that's not what I th thought, um, because I know the rules of football, and if you're not winning, and and especially in the second year we had not a good of uh, not a good moment uh, when he got sacked um, I was experienced enough to understand every every player understands and we are prof professional footballers and we get paid for that and we know the the rules in football when when you're not winning uh, the coach the manager is more or less the weakest person in the team who can be replaced and uh, uh, I, I, I made the experience before in different clubs, working with different coaches. And that's part of football, you know, changing coaches. He was, he was already uh, the th in his fourth year, I think. And um, if, you, if you see, you know, the average time of how, how long managers work in these days in a club, it was quite a good a, a, a good average time and he was so intense the way he worked was so intense with the team that uh, maybe you come to a point where things are not working anymore in the, in the right thing so but it was more or less our fault everyone's fault the players we didn't play well and and of course it was decision to make by the club to change the coach or not and um, I think but even then after the fans they they know what uh, he achieved with the club, you know, he brought Chelsea back to that level, you know, to be in focused in, in international football, not just in the Premier League. And he had a huge impact on the development uh, after in the club. And uh, um, there was not something we regret. We had to look forward, you know, with, uh, with Avram Grant as a, as a following manager uh, to do immediately well. So there's no much thinking as a player to look back, you know, to the old coach, Things are going going on, but I mean the, the relationship is still good with him. I think with a lot of players, he has a has a still a good relationship, and as you will not find many players who speak bad about him uh, even after he left the club. It's interesting you say that because every time Jose Mourinho joins a club, when he's successful, something appears to go spectacularly wrong, and it ends quite quickly. What happened then? It, it, was it, there's all talk always 
at both his spells at Chelsea of player power and people saying he's lost the dressing room, the players aren't playing for him. Was there any truth in that at all when you were there? No, because um, I think everyone felt, especially when you have such a big group of, of important and big players, like I think we had six or seven national team captains in the team. We had several uh, huge players, important players next to that. So the group was so strong that we needed someone like uh, Jose Mourinho leading that team and uh, having this personality to handle all these characters. Uh, uh, and, and big players understand that and they want that. And uh, um, of course he, had, he was hard sometimes and um, he has his way to deal with the team. But this works really well with strong players and um, with, with, with players they, they're competitive and they want to work hard and they want leaders, they accept leaders and that's what the team did. They accepted Jose in any way and, uh, and, and of course the quality was there and we believed him, uh, you know what he told us and that's why it was working well. Um, of course if you're not winning anymore and things are going not that in the right way anymore, there's small things when, when strong person, even myself I saw that at the uh, when I look back in, in my career when I was national team captain and uh, if things are not going so well anymore and you're such a strong character and personality and leader you you do things some, something not always right you know and then if you look back then sometimes you think ah this was a decision maybe I could be more yeah or handle in a different way but because strong characters are so uh, yeah, like they are, they in that moment, they think my opinion is, is, is right. And that's important because you need that leaders in certain moments in decision to have to make decisions. If you don't have them, it will never work. But sometimes you come to the point where things are, yeah, not working anymore. And then it's better to, to go different ways. And that's what the club did. Michael, you mentioned the luck associated with the 2008 Champions League final. Fast forward almost a year and the, the semi-final against Barcelona. That game in the second leg at Stamford Bridge appeared to have everything. One of the images was you chasing the official. When you look back now, is that the one that stands out above any other? The one that hurts the most? Maybe, bec maybe, yeah, because it was so uh, recognisable and there were so many things going on in the game which we felt in that time uh, as a Chelsea player or as a Chelsea fan uh, they were unfair you know there were some some things where where you thought maybe with a video assistant referee today it yeah. uh, would be much different you know and uh, yeah because it was so disappointed because we were maybe even stronger than 2008 when we reached the final uh, this team was so so strong and we really felt we could win that league, that title uh, this year and, and I remember Man United were all, all already qualified for the final they won their match and uh, yeah we had this rematch against Barcelona at home and we totally dominating them um, yeah everyone knows what happened and uh, we don't have to repeat it but it was it was frustrating because you know when you when the team is better or another team is better than you and you even a club like Barcelona you can accept totally accept uh, they were the better team but we were so much better than them and, and, and we thought yeah one or the other decision was not right so that was uh, yeah and then you could see that in some reactions of yeah some players especially me as well but it's, this is football you know we all have emotions and uh, all together it was in a frame uh, which was acceptable and and of course, we were frustrated, but uh, things like they are. And but this was one of the games. Uh, yeah, it was. It maybe comes up as as the one uh, to remember most. Yeah. You mentioned that game. It was it was under Gus Hiddink. He was only going to be there for a short time anyway. When he goes, Carlo Ancelotti comes in, and suddenly everything clicks. Why? It was not a huge difference, you know. To uh, I have to admit. Um, uh, to Goose Hitting because I was really impressed of Goose Hitting even if it was clear that he just is temporarily there at Chelsea until the end of the season. But the things he 
uh, or the way he calmed down things in the club, because I remember after Abraham Grant, which he never really had a chance, in my opinion, to look back, to stay longer, because it's in general, it's really difficult after Jose Mourinho to, to work at Chelsea. It could be problem, cause a problem for any uh, manager uh, after Jose, because he had such a huge impact, such a relationship with the players, with the fans, that would be a problem in a certain way for any 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 coach. And that was for, for Avram, because I remember we, we played really good football under him. We had more freedom. He, he managed the team in a different way, uh, not so leading the team, so more giving more freedom to the players. Uh, but a lot of players thought he would be weak, which he wasn't. You know, he was a really smart guy, really intelligent uh, uh, coach in, in my perspective. But, you know, the coach made it, uh, the club made a different decision in terms of Scolari, you know, which didn't work at all. We have to admit, uh, he never really got, um, I think, a relationship to the players, so then replaced by Goose Hitting. And, and Goose was a really smart guy, spoke a lot of language, so had really good access to the players. But with Carlo, of course, as a, as a really gentleman and uh, smart guy, you know, picking up things, seeing how players work and, and, and finding the right system, the right way to let us play, enjoy the football again. And uh, I think he did also really well, have found, found a good combination in terms of yeah, being the person, the, the person of respect uh, and being a manager, but also allowing us to uh, every player, every individual player to uh, to play and shine and, and, and play in the right position. And I think that what, what uh, w was the case, or that's why we actually played so dominating football in that uh, uh, year and, and winning uh, the double. Yeah, you, you say you, you won the double, but that ended up being your final season at Chelsea. How, why did you leave then and, and did Carlo say, no, I want you to stay? No, I remember um, Carlo wanted me and I had good discussions with him and, and he said, no, Michael, I, it's, it's not about me because the club, I, I remember, made a decision. He doesn't, I was, you know, 33 already and normally uh, they made this decision to give players in that age just one year contract anymore. I wanted two. I would love to have two more years because, you know, when you uh, in that age, it's better to have two years to have a better or can plan better. Today, I have to say maybe it was wrong. You know, I should should stay uh, even that one year to accept that and then see how things go from there. Uh, but I, yeah, I made a decision also to yeah, to to stay with these two years and, and maybe to go back to the Bundesliga to have, uh, to have a, a two-year contract in that age. You mentioned went back to the Bundesliga. It was Bayer Leverkusen yeah. of all clubs. Was that always a plan of yours when, when you were there or it, it just came... No, it was not really a plan. I could never imagine that i go back to Leverkusen, to be honest. And uh, this was something uh, when I was not... Because until the last day, I actually thought... Uh, yeah, we would find a way at Chelsea. It was kind of poker, you know, giving a one or two year contract. So for my, inside myself, I was really hoping that I could stay at Chelsea until the end. But it wasn't the case. And then the injury came, you know, in the last match. And that's why I think things also changed a bit in terms of Chelsea. You know, how they see Michael Ballack in the year of 38, 33 having that experience, you know, with, when I came my first year, I had a long uh, uh, injury with seven months. I was out for seven months and to have that again, maybe they were a bit scared to, that we come together or give me the two-year contract or even a year. So that's what things were changing a lot in that last two weeks, four, year, four weeks after, uh, after the last match against Portsmouth uh, in the Cup. Uh, so I have to orientate myself new, you know, I have to sort it out myself new, um, I have to think new in a new direction. So I was never really thinking on the Bundesliga or on, on, on especially Leverkusen because I had such a fantastic time at Leverkusen and normally you don't go back. But then Rudi Völler called me and he said, yeah, things are, are new and how you, how you would think when we 
yeah, if you come back to us and uh, from that point of view, I actually was already just, uh, not already, I was uh, just thinking, starting thinking about the move back to, to Leverkusen and things from that point went quick, you know, I was talking to him and uh, yeah, that's why it happened. Just finally, Michael, you had two years there. Could you have played on after that and maybe even try a new challenge? People talk about going to America and playing in the MLS. Is that something that crossed your mind or did you think, right, this, this is it for me? No, I, I, I thought about that. I thought about that, but uh, I, I was also a player who yeah, was lucky actually also to play over tw more or less 12 years on the highest level with clubs. They made it possible to play uh, at, at uh, Champions League level and I was so competitive always to play at that level and so I thought about uh, but finally I decided to stop because yeah I felt not really comfortable and, and uh, my last year at Leverkusen was not so enjoyable that I had this fun you know that you need in, in as a 35 year age player to actually yeah, that that you, you myself understand the way you want to go in your retiring years you know how you want to end football you want to end your career to to enjoy that football to have that good access in football and so it was better for me to actually say to stop my career on a high level than rather maybe going to a weaker league let's say in america or china and and yeah, don't know actually what you expect uh, because you as a as a as a big player you you always have to make that decision because there's huge expectations as well and in a weaker league you know with let's say weaker players uh, it's not easy it doesn't make uh, doesn't make things easier in the way people see you the way what they accept and then yeah lowering your expectations yourself because that's what it is, you know, playing on a, on a lower level. Uh, some players can do that, and, and, but you need, again, I've, I didn't felt uh, there or there because that, that was something totally new and I don't know what I expect. So I, I like things I can have an influence on, you know, I can uh, make decisions and know what I, I get or maybe a certain percentage of, percentage of knowing what I, I get. And that was... Uh, wouldn't be the case if I go to America because it was for me something not really I could feel what I expect in that league. Uh, of course, there are some players they move to the to the MLS, but uh, I totally accept when they do the move, and there is also a new experience. But for my for myself, it was never never n not really an option uh, to to finish my career like that. So that's why I decided I know what I had, you know. Uh, Stopping on the highest level, and that's why I decided with 35 that it was it, that's that's it. And that's it, Michael Baller. Okay, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.